Hi, my name is Spencer Colgan and welcome to my channel. Spencer Colgan is wallpaper. This video is being made for the wallpaper installer. The wallpaper installer who has just begun his or her journey into the wonderful business of wallpaper installation. Um, there are a couple of things you need to know as a business owner that no one's going to tell you that because of my experience in wallpaper hanging, having begun the business by myself, with myself, and learning as I go along, I want to share with you some of the pitfalls of the business. Now, what prompted the video was one of my colleagues from Charlotte had an experience that I myself had within the first 18 months of having opened my own installation business. And that is hanging materials that were not good quality materials. It happens when a customer, a substantial customer, usually a, a customer who has a very beautiful home, is among the affluent of your clientele, and, and this is the pitfall. When I say affluent, I mean somebody who's wealthy. They hand you a product and you get your price, and you go to install the product. Here's what happens to the new installer. Your hands are able to install all products. Your, your abilities are extremely professional, extremely proficient. But your judgment is still back in the beginning stages of the novice. I guarantee you, for those of you who are beginning your business, you're going to be handed wallpaper that isn't as well constituted as this receipt is. Okay? You see this? You're going to be handed wallpaper that when you do this, does this. And here's what happens. And, and I just talked to my colleague and I, I, I told, I told my colleague, you know why this happened. You didn't want to say that you couldn't install it. And so she agreed. The problem is, is that some of the products these folks are buying from other countries is garbage. I'm going to just tell you like it is. I'm not going to mince words. Some of the stuff on the market is garbage. And it's purchased by the wealthiest people who are counting on you to install it. You come into the home. House is six, 7,000 square feet, beautiful home, $2 million home. Here you go, Mr. Installer, thank you for coming. I couldn't get anybody to do this. You open it up, right? You take your, you, you, you're always reading the directions, always. I don't care how long you've been installing wallpaper, get those instructions and read them from top to bottom because it's a liability if you don't. If you don't read the instructions on how to hang the product, you're missing out on a potential factor that may be used against you. For example, how many wool coverings require clay-based paste? Not many. 
but in the instructions for some commercial wool coverings, it will say in the bottom, clay-based paste only. If you do not use clay, you will void the warranty. Now, the customer's not gonna be able to know if you use clay-based, unless they're paying attention to what you're doing. But when your wool covering fails, and they send the rep, they meaning the company that manufactured the wool covering, you, you install a corridor of wool covering, you're looking at five, $6,000 worth of material. I guarantee you the rep is going to come down Pull it back and say, he used clear paste. Liability. Liability. I f strongly suggest to you that you read the instructions to determine if you are following all of the must-dos. Let's get back to the issue of the poorly constituted wallpaper. I'm here to tell you that I am a person who has installed a very fine product. I won't give you the company name because I don't really remember it, but it was one of those top quality manufacturers in the United States. And two things were wrong with the wall covering. Number one, when I reversed each sh next sheet, every other sheet, I reversed it. The, sh the shading was worse than it was when I didn't reverse it. And you can't tell the effect until you actually reverse it and put it on the wall. You can't just hold it up and say, how does it look? The shading takes place when you put the pieces together and then you step back. And it also has to be wet so that, so that the wall covering is under the stress of saturation with the paste and it's installed next to each other, okay? So when you, you, you can't tell if this white and this white is that much different until you do this. Now you might be able to see a color differential, right? This looks brighter, doesn't it? But from here, can you tell? No, that's my point. And so following the directions, on one of the products, I reversed them and I said, boy, one of them looks darker than the other. This stuff was junk. Not only that, when I took my knife and went to the bottom, it was tearing. These blades, I'm, I snapped them off. I do it again. I said, must have been a dull blade. Do it again. Tear it. Folks, when I tell you I started comparing the wall covering to toilet tissue wet, it was exactly what I was dealing with. This was in a two and a half million dollar home in the Tampa Bay area. And I was blamed for the result. And I told the customer, now you have to realize the customer doesn't know. They're relying on, on you. To, to tell them. Here's what I learned from a veteran installer from New Jersey, okay? Because I called him. He said, Spencer, and I'm gonna share it with you. If you ever run into a problem with wallpaper, you have to remember something. And I'm gonna add what I've learned to what he told me. He, he said, number one, get the customer in the room. Hi. I want to show you what's happening here. This wallpaper doesn't meet up, okay? Your wallpaper doesn't align properly. Let me tell you something. Since he told me this, every time I do it, this is what the customer does. Your potential court adversary, I'm going to get to that. Your potential court adversary says, hmm, that stinks. Is there something you can do about it? I'm here to tell you, if you didn't tell him or her that, this is what they would say. Look at this garbage and I gotta pay, I gotta pay you. <clears throat> you wanna get paid for this? It doesn't even align. 
It doesn't do this. Look at this. The color's coming off. If you had opened your mouth at the beginning of when you first discovered it, you avoid all of those problems. There's nothing better than feeling like you are with the customer against the manufacturer. They will never hold you account. It's a psychological thing. They will never hold you accountable for something you have identified as their advocate. When you identify a problem in a product that they have purchased, you become their advocate. And this is your approach. Ma'am, I want to show you something. I, I don't want you uh, suffering a, you know, a liability here. Maybe you can return this stuff. Just like that. You come out just like that. Nine out of ten times, they're going to tell you to install it. Listen, uh, number one, your color's coming off when I wipe it. Show them your hands. My hands are blue. <laughs> I'm just installing it. Here's what happens with the new installer. Oh, my goodness. This isn't going up. The customer's going to be angry. Get rid of that mentality right now. Get rid of the mentality. For those of you who are new at installing, and when I say new, I mean the first and second year, you're new. You're new. You haven't come across all of the problems of wallpaper installation until you've been doing this three years. Three years, you've dealt with the failure on commercial projects. Failure meaning your time. You know how commercial projects are. When are you going to get this done? They hire you. They're, the, they, they're your best friends until the first day on the job. You got the carpenters there. You got the glaziers there. You got the plumbers there. Where's my tools? Somebody's moving your ladder. Somebody's using your lift. When are you going to get done? When are you going to get done? When are you going to get done? You just met your first commercial liability. Okay. And that is the time factor. So you become experienced and you, and you get this experience, I say, within about three years. You have to look at your projects in the following manner. Every customer is your potential enemy in court. And I hate to say it, I'm talking about the people who are handing you $3,000 wallpaper to hang, uh, or you, you got a $15,000 job. Let me share something with you. Uh, about five months ago now, I was called to a house, $20 million house in Tampa, Tampa Bay. I quit the job. I did $3,500 into the project, and I told the GC, write me a check, I'm done. I get to the job the first day with my helper. The, the confused project manager on the job brings me to a room where there are literally 15 boxes of wallpaper from England, from Germany, boxes ranging from six feet long. They look like caskets all over the ground. So I go like this, because I'm a veteran now, just like this. And I urge you to do the same thing. Where does this stuff go? He says, I don't have to know. Sir, when you find out where each of these boxes go, this was a big project, okay? I said, sir, discreetly, when you find out where these uh individual wallpapers go do me a favor give me a call back i just incurred uh, a liability with my helper here i gotta pay him you're not ready i just came back from vacation you guys told me when are you gonna start when are you gonna start when are you gonna start i'm here to start you're not ready i'm not too happy but i understand i'll be back tomorrow morning he goes come back tomorrow morning i'll know where it goes 24 hours later <clears throat> Same bat station. Did you ever watch Batman in the 70s? Same bat time, same bat station. Come back the next day. And all of you veterans, Lou Indorado, Dan Childs, you know what I'm talking about. All of the guys who follow me, Mac Lost, Sphinx, the guys in the UK, you know what I'm talking about. Get there the next day. Same grumpy. Uh, he, he was actually a good guy in the end. Same, G, same uh, project manager. I say, hey, Bill, 
Oh yeah, the wallpaper. We go back to the same room. He's as prepared as he was the day before. I said, Bill, I told you yesterday, I, 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 I'm the hanger. Guys, I'm trying to teach you something here. I'm the hanger. Where do you want me to hang this stuff? Do not take the responsibility to be going through 10 different, I'm telling you right now, here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna hang the wrong wallpaper in the wrong room. And we're talking about a $20 million house. The wallpaper alone was $50,000. Unless you have the money in the bank to write a check for 50 grand, don't take on the liability. Bill, <clears throat> I came here yesterday with my helper. I had to pay him for two hours. He did no work. I didn't get paid for it. Where do you want me to hang this wallpaper? I said, I'm gonna go outside, organize my truck. I want you to give me a box that goes in a room. He says, that's fair enough. <clears throat> he hands me a casket <clears throat> filled with wallpaper. Arte, if you guys uh, are pretty sharp and you wanna see this stuff, go on my YouTube channel and look up the installation and you're gonna see it, A-R-T-E. And it had to do with uh, making the seams lay down. He says, hang this in the playroom. Guys, here's what you're gonna do. If you get this, here's what you do. You try to get a sample of the product and you have the GC, whoever, go around the room. He's gonna lie and say, he didn't tell you to install it in this room or that room. I know I'm digressing here, but I'm gonna include everything that you have to know to be sharp about this. Here's, a, here's what you do. And you can't be shy about it. You're in business. A business person can't be shy. But everybody wants you to be shy because that's when you absorb liability. It's a psychological thing. Trust me when I tell you. Sir, very professional. Sir, this is Arte number 24703. Please tell me what room this goes in. And then you label the room. Jennifer's room. Okay. Jennifer's room. You put Jennifer's room on it, on the, on the sample of the wall covering. I don't care if you have to cut a piece off of the wall covering. A little piece, cut it, put it on the room. He initials it, you initial it. If you're dealing with a big project, you got to think like that because here's, here's, here's what did happen on that job and here's what's going to happen to you. He's going to tell you to install Arte in Jennifer's room and it was the wrong room and it was supposed to be in Robert's room. And that's exactly what happened. Six hours into the job on day two, I'm installing the thing beautifully. <laughs> Check the video out. And guess what? The homeowner comes in and says, Spencer, why are you installing this in this room? I went, I stopped. I said, we need to talk outside. And, and by the way, the following conversation that I'm telling you made the GC, the big bad guy who was begging me to do the job. I was on vacation on the West Coast, begging me to do the job. He got angry that I, who works, I work for myself, not for him. I work for, the best thing in life is get your own business. We go outside, I say, listen, because now I'm experienced in life. I know this conversation is going to anger somebody, but I wanna be discreet. I have to represent my interests, right? He's not gonna say he made a mistake and told me where to hang this thing, but I don't have the proof either of the initials because Spencer likes to tell you how to do things. He doesn't always do them himself. I learned from this job. Ma'am, and he did admit it. I said, ma'am, because I was on the, he, it's gonna be very hard for the guy to lie when you're on the job. I said, ma'am, he told me to hang this product in this room. She said, this is, this is the wrong room. I said, well, here's the deal. Your, your general contractor isn't on the job. He doesn't come to the job. Your, your project manager is here. He doesn't know where your wallpaper goes. I said, now, if you tell him that, you're going to cause tension between me and him for the duration of this project. I suggest that you don't tell him that and you work around that. Customer goes right to the project manager and says, Spencer says you don't know what you're doing. 
The guy to whom she told this is a decent guy. <clears throat> he actually admitted that he didn't know what he was doing with the wallpaper. <clears throat> <clears throat> Although the project manager's boss, when he heard that, he said, how dare you have conversation with my customer? I said, listen, buddy, I work for Spencer Colgan. I don't work for you. I want a check for $3,500. I'm done here. He, you know what he said to me? Because I gave him a flat price. He says, I want to know how many hours you, you spent there. I want to know how much material. I said, no, 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 buddy. I gave you a flat price. I'm prorating my time. I got here. You guys gave me a, a run around the first day. I'm here the second day. I'm installing in the wrong room. You people don't know what you're doing. Cut me a check. The, ho the homeowner is a, uh, I'm told he's a billionaire. I don't care what he is. He says, cut the guy a check. <coughs> um, you know, they were reasonable people. Because I told the woman, I said, I told the wife, I said, there's something about when you look somebody in the face and you tell them, here's the deal. And you look them straight in the face and you say, your GC doesn't know what he's doing. You, I'm telling you, people will believe you. You be honest with them straight up. I've been doing this a long time. Uh, my name is all over the internet. And you, you don't want to say this, but you want to let them know, I don't need this job. I don't, and I don't need the aggravation. I essentially told her, I don't need this job. I'm here to represent my company to do an excellent job. It's a challenge to install this wallpaper. This is high quality wallpaper. And I'm here to do you a good job. And that's really, do you think I want to be in a $20 million house with a bunch of loud music and people running around, borrowing your stuff? You got to lock your tool. I don't want to be on that job, neither do you. But we do it because, you know, it's work. You don't run from every challenge, you know, and plus it looks great on my YouTube channel. Now, let's get back to the thing. The guy gave me the runaround. I said, listen, bud, you're going to cut me a check for $3,500, all right? Um, your guy didn't know what he was doing. I, and then I write him an email. I update the status of the job because you, oh, we got to be thinking court. I'm going to court. I'm going to be going to court on this thing. So I write him an email. Due to the fact that you're a project manager, guys, start documenting the issues. People will run. They already know what you're doing. It's, it's for court. Dear Mr. Cooper, because your project manager... Philip Smith was not aware of where the wallpaper was supposed to go on January 14th, 2021. I had to come back the next day. In the morning of the next day, he didn't know where it went. Unfortunately, I told him I would organize my truck for an hour. You're putting in details. He already knows this doesn't look good. It's if the owner gets their hands on it, you know. And then I got the check and I was done with the job. But if I were a new installer, I'd be like, oh, $20 million house, I got to install this. No, you don't. No, you don't. You're the boss. If you're a wallpaper installer, nobody knows how to do your job. Wallpaper installers are like surgeons in the medical field. Very few people can do your job. I learned this several years ago when I went on the, the internet to hire wallpaper installers and I got a bunch of clowns who didn't know what they were doing. I said, did you ever hang wallpaper? Oh yeah, I hung wallpaper in my country. I hung wallpaper uh, up in New York. I hung wallpaper but when I was a kid. Nobody, not one of them was telling the truth. If you're a wallpaper installer, you are among the highest of tradesmen the highest of craftsmen. Start understanding it and treat your customers accordingly. And price your jobs accordingly also. Okay? You're not the average painter. A lot of people have no idea about wallpaper. And if your hands are gifted with manipulating paper around crown molding and cabinetry and toilets, guess what? You've been given a gift by God. Make sure that you are the boss on every project, not the homeowner, not the GC, not the project manager. And if you have to walk out on a job 
because your environment is not correct, walk out on the job. What, is, what do I mean by the environment? You get to a commercial project, you get your price, you're happy. The ground has, it's all broken up. It's all broken up. It's unsafe. There's rocks. They broke up the cement. They, they're pouring the next day. You get there. You tell the project manager, why do you have me here when your floor is unstable? What, what do you care about the floor? <laughs> Goodbye. You, you don't even answer that question. Goodbye. I'm out of here. Why? Because I'm going to trip on this. Because I have a scaffold that needs to roll on this. Because I, ha I need a ladder that's stable. Okay. If you don't say these things, when you fall or when you tear the paper or when you whatever, it's on you. Because if it gets to court, the judge is going to say, did you inform the customer about this condition? And when your answer is no, you have no standing. Okay? Stop worrying that you're not going to get the work, that you're not going to get the job. Been there, done it. I'm here to show you. You're going to get the job. Wallpaper is king. <clears throat> okay. Commercial projects. No water. First thing I ask commercial projects, where's the water? This is what I get. What water? Where is the running water? When there's no running water, here's what you get. It's on site. It's a lie. It's on site. How far from the project is the water? Because the last time I believed the answer, the water was a football field. No exaggeration here. A f Sonovus Bank. A football field away from the walls getting wallpapered. It's on site. If I had known that, I wouldn't have taken the job. I don't need to be walking through mud raining out for, for water it's just remember your hands are you're a surgeon surgeons don't walk through mud hey listen i don't think i'm going to get a, a thumbs down on on this video i'm talking to the professional wallpaper installer don't be walking through mud to get water okay make sure that they have a running water source in the place and if they haven't finalized the the plans and they haven't been signed off the plumbing <laughs> they're not ready for you. They're not ready for the surgeon to come in and hang wallpaper. Don't be walking a football field to get running water to wipe down your commercial... Pro because here's why. Did you ever leave paste residue on commercial wall covering? Sure you did. When is it easy to get the paste off? The same day or the next day? That's why. Make sure you got running water on the job. And get yourself a heater. Like I showed you in the video last month. Make sure you heat up your water so the uh, paste residue comes off easier. <clears throat> Let's get back to the reason why this video was made. Now, with that in mind, you suffer from not wanting to tell your customer that you are unable to do something. You don't want to tell your customer, I can't install this. Because you sound like you don't know what you're doing. But you don't sound like that. You go to a doctor. He says, I got to check to see if your flesh, whatever. You, you're going for a mesh, a hernia. I got to see if your, your abdomen can take this mesh. Your flesh, your, your muscles may be too full, whatever. You go and you check out the wallpaper. And I don't check it out before I hang it. I don't start doing this to my wallpaper. The first sheet is always the sheet for which you make the plans for the rest of the installation. The booking time, how long you book it, it's constitution after it gets wet. You know how, how easy it is to stretch it how easy it is to tear it, how easy it is to get the color come running off on your hands. You learn everything within the first half hour of the job on the first sheet or the second sheet. You understand the whole project after that. If your wallpaper is tearing in your hands, 
if you can put your finger through your wallpaper, stop the job. Do not install that wallpaper. Stop worrying that it's your fault because the longer you hang it, the more liability you're going to incur. And when you're working for an unreasonable customer who's always right, who's got more money. I was told by a customer once, you know I have the resources to bury you, right? Um, multimillionaire, I have the resources to bury you. That's what he told me. Um, you don't want to work for people like this. And he was actually a nice guy. You know, generally speaking, he says, I have the resources to bury you. When the wallpaper is garbage, stop the job. Start thinking you got the day off. Think, well, you know, the customer doesn't have a good product here. I can't do this. Okay. So you get your wallpaper. <clears throat> You're putting your finger through it. You go to cut it. And it's tearing as you cut it. Brand new blades. Don't install that stuff. Don't even install it. If your wallpaper is tearing, it's because it's garbage. I installed that in a two and a half million dollar house and, and it was one of those very high-end products. And I started thinking, hmm, what am I doing wrong? It didn't dawn on me. I'm not doing anything wrong. This stuff is garbage. I'm a veteran. This never happens. I install wallpaper beautifully. Everybody's happy with my work. Stop the job. Call the customer in and say, ma'am, I want to show you something. Take a wallpaper, put your finger right through it. I can't install this stuff. This is... Uh... Now, you never want to tell the person, but I do it because... Some people are so unreasonable, you have to say, this is junk. Just like with a straight face. Uh, I don't want to insult you, but this is junk. Just like that. Don't smile, because they're going to feel like they get insulted. When a wealthy person buys junk, it's very insulting to their egos. So I say it because I know how they get. They're going to be your enemy in a courthouse. This is junk. You're still their best friend because you and she, and I say she because you're usually dealing with a woman, you become best friends because the product is garbage and you're her advocate. It's only one sheet. You got the day off. Stop thinking like, I need this job. I need this money. I need that. I got to make this work. You're not going to make garbage look good. You. You stop installing that. You need to enjoy what you're doing. If you're going to do something well, you and I both know you need to enjoy it. You need to be, in order to do something well, your mind must be engaged with your hands. If you're doing something nervous that it's not, you're not going to do it well. You need to, if you're not enjoying what you're doing, and I don't mean, you know, if something's in the way, you get annoyed. If you are actually worried about the product, you need to stop the job and, and tell the customer, here are the three, I think there are three, main reasons why you should stop a job. You have significant color removal. I worked for a multi-billion dollar corporation. There aren't many in Tampa Bay, so look them up. It starts with an A and ends with an N, as in Nancy. Multi-billion dollar corporation for drugs. The person who hired me manufactured the wallpaper in Tampa and, and actually put this, the uh, latex ink on it. And when I touched it, I made fingerprints on, the, on this garbage. And um, customer comes in. Mm, take all this down, just like this. Take all this stuff down. He called the guy from Boston, had the stuff manufactured overnight, told the manufacturer, whatever it costs, 100 grand, whatever it costs. He said, I need this. The governor's coming. I need this stuff done by next Friday. The guy that hired me took a $36,000 loss. 
And um, I got paid, but he wasn't a good guy either. He told me I should have hid this and he, he corruption, you know, I should have lied. The three things that are gonna make you fail are significant color removal while you're manipulating and wiping. I'm not talking about you ha you're hanging purple wallpaper, your rag is purple, that's not significant. I'm talking, it fades the images. I mean, that's significant. Two, it tears easily. This rarely happens, but if these are reasons why you must stop the job. Color removal, tears easily. You can't install it. I installed a job six months ago for a woman. She was so nice. I said, ma'am, and I was going on vacation the next day. I said, your wallpaper's ripping. I said, I know how much you love this stuff. It's garbage. I'm going to install it. If within 90 days you get new wallpaper, I will hang it free. No call back. You know, because I was charging her plenty of money to hang this stuff and paint the rest of her room. And she said, no, just hang it. I felt bad for her. You know, I, I'm a human being. I felt bad. I said, I'm going to do the best job that I can. Here's what I'm going to offer you. You get new wallpaper, I will hang it free. Just on one wall. And some of you wouldn't even do that. You don't have to, but that's what I offered. And I'm glad she didn't call me back. I don't want to go and lose a day. But I felt bad getting paid for something. I, I don't, who wants to put their name on this stuff? Okay. The third reason why you, you're going to have a problem is misalignment. Some of this peel and stick garbage doesn't align properly. The first three feet from the floor up meets perfectly. You don't have any torque on the wallpaper when you're experienced, you know what that means. You're hanging straight up, no obstacles like a window, radiator, nothing like that. Doesn't align after three feet. You try your magic. The more you manipulate wallpaper into alignment, the more the next edge is gonna be out of whack, by the way. Because you're, you're bending the wallpaper and those bends send like shock waves through the rest of the wallpaper. Those corrections that you make on the left side are going to affect the right side. Okay? I can't get into it, but those of you who hang wallpaper know exactly what I'm talking about. Misalignments, color removal, and tearing easily are three reasons why you have to call the customer right to the wall and say, here's what's going on. The color's coming off. It's tearing Here's what you say. I'm not going to feel right taking your money installing this stuff. Okay. So I got to run. Uh, I, I wanted to share that with you because it just came up from another colleague. And I hope that I taught you something in this video. Folks, do not install stuff for which you have no confidence. Don't do it. Always get the information. This is what I, I get from the customer when I'm installing. What is the product? Oh, I don't know. It's Okay, when you find out, please let me know ASAP so I can tell you. You want to know for yourself, what is the product? Okay? And then, you know, you'll be able to better deal with what you can anticipate. And also the price. It affects the price. Uh, if you're installing peel and stick on a ceiling, it's definitely different than installing grass cloth on a ceiling, right? Secondly, you want to know if the wall has any texture on it, and if so, if this has an impact on the installation. Thirdly, you want to know, what is the environment? Give me a picture of the job. I had a guy last year who said, it's only an 8 by 10 wall. I said, all right, 8 by 10? This is just last year. I'm not thinking, I'm driving... I gave him the price. No exaggeration. No, no, no. It was six wide. Six wide, which is an odd wall, right? Six wide, eight high. I come to the job. We're looking up at the wall. From the ground from which I looked at the project, it was 12 feet. I said, you told me six wide by eight. He goes, yeah, there it is, all the way up there. The wall was on the second story and you needed 
Batman's utility belt to install the wallpaper. You, I, there was no floor. So the wallpaper started at the second level and went up eight feet. And it was only six wide. He goes, it's an easy... I looked at him like this. I should have walked off the job. I said, you call this a six by eight wall? He goes, that's what it is. I said, no, that's the area to be covered. I said, this wall is two stories up in the air. I need a platform. I said, I got, I got to change the price on you, buddy. So be in charge. And if you learn nothing from this video, here's what I want you to know. Be willing to walk off the job. Because ultimately, it's between you, the customer. Every customer is a potential enemy. Some of you, that may, that may annoy. But I'm telling you right now, after having done this a long time, every customer, and I know there are beautiful people out there. They offer you lunch. They give you a tip. The, and they're the best people. But if you look at it objectively, you'll learn something. Every customer is your potential enemy. They, you're, they're, they are your potential detractors. They are your potential bad mouthers. You need to be well established in what you do to be able to say, Mrs. Smith, this wallpaper is not going to serve you well. I had a customer put her finger in my face. Um, an old lady down in St. Petersburg. Her walls, I was installing wallpaper in a restaurant that was over 100 years old. Her corners were rounded. They were in they were in nineties. They were rounded. I was hanging monkeys that had arms. So when I plumbed the next sheet after the corner, I lost from the elbow of the monkey <clears throat> to this far. So the hand was attached to this. She said, What's this? I said, Oh your walls are your walls are really not not straight. I to plumb it. <clears throat> I'm using. You always talk professionally. <clears throat> According to the professional st uh, industry standards, I plumbed. You use the language. You give her the court answer. I had to plumb the next sheet. Consequently, I had to remove the excess. That was the result of having cut it, and you lost at the top a full inch of wallpaper in order to make this plum. If I didn't do that, your wallpaper would be crooked. Before I could get the last part of the sentence out, she had her finger in my face telling me that she was sick of me. And I didn't mention the booze that was coming off of her, her breath. If you like the video, click on like. Share your story with me. Because if you do, you're going to be sharing with everybody else who watches the video. Thank you.